Hey, what's up, Grinder Clone? Colossus here for a short, with a short video, and uh, today I'd like to talk about a topic started by Grinder School member Paul D76, and uh, he wrote something about uh, chasing uh, fish at the micro stakes will turn you into a fish, and he gives an hand example uh, for. I'm gonna quickly go over the hand for the guys who have not uh, seen this particular topic uh, our hero here is in the cutoff uh, under the gun uh, the player is a fish and the under the gun plus one player seems to be like a guy who likes to play as many hands as possible against the fish so uh, the fish raises up and uh, under the gun and our under the gun plus one or I'm gonna call him the chish the fish so the, f the fish chaser and uh, uh, calls and our hero three bets uh, everybody folds except our fish chaser uh, calls the three bet and the flop comes uh, seven six nine a pretty crappy flop by the way and well a really crappy flop <coughs> and uh, our hero decides to see bet and under the gun plus one or the fish chaser just folds so from here on, uh, Paul D, uh, our uh, Grand School member Paul D, decides or concludes that chasing fish is sometimes not profitable when there's a player behind you who is going to take advantage of the fact that you are trying to play as many hands as possible against the fish. Now, the hand example that he gives contains one major mistake in which, which I haven't seen mentioned yet by any of the other Grinder School members uh, who uh, read this thread and I'm gonna go back to the hand history and the fish is uh, under the gun here and has less than 15, well, he about, it's 4 and now so he has about, I don't know, 40 big blinds around there and <clears throat> this is in my opinion a huge mistake by Paul D to start tree bending fishes which have less than uh, 50 big blinds with a hand such as King 10 suited first of all uh, usually when you tree bet a lot of the profit is coming from your folding and folding equity pre-flop and post-flop when you are going to play against the fish well fish uh, have the tendency to call way too often so when you three bet here and uh, fish usually are going to call your three bet once they raised it uh, raise it up themselves pre-flop so you lose a lot of the profit till profit profit profitability of tree bedding um, by tree bedding uh, calling stations like this fish and what happens here well it doesn't happen here is that when here are tree beds usually the fish is going to call you have king tens um, suited the flop comes it doesn't matter what the flop comes but once you see that the flop I mean there is no money left essentially you are practically all in uh, no matter what the flop comes, even if you have two overcards and the uh, and the fish decides to shove on you, I mean you're you're gonna have to you're gonna be priced in to uh, to call it off there. So I'm quite surprised that nobody mentions uh, this mistake. And I think the wrong conclusions are also drawn here that chasing fish relentlessly is not being good first of all I want to mention something um, tree bedding fish is usually not the way to go to uh, to, to beat the micro stakes and definitely not to beat uh, for an owl because as I mentioned you uh, a lot of the profitability about tree bedding is going to come from the fact uh, that you have a lot of fold equity uh, which you don't uh, have against fish and especially not against short stacked fish I imagine if uh, let's say uh, under the gun uh, the fish chaser would not have um, 
would not have come along in this pot. I would never, never three bet here my king ten suited against this fish. I would just call his uh, his raise and play the, play the uh, play the hand post flop in position against the fish. Several reasons are for this. Uh, the reason why we ice raise fish is when they limp in. You can raise the pot so you can get the pot heads up post flop. This is the main reason. The reason there uh, for this is because uh, is that your equity heads up in position against the fish is going to be much much bigger than when you uh, get the pot uh, three way. Let's say for instance the fish uh, raises up like he did here, and we have queen jack suited. I would just merely call and. Um, yeah, I would just merely call and hopefully uh, not a lot of players come along. If a lot of players come along, well, so be it. We have still have queen jack suited. If the fish would have limped in, I would definitely have raised it up. And the reason uh, that I raised it up is not because uh, I want to push the fish out of the pot. I want to keep the fish in the pot. I expect to keep the fish in the pot. But I want to push the other players out of the pot who might come along when I just merely uh, call, and which will happen frequently if uh, a lot of people decide when already two players limped in that they will play. The hands that they will limp in along uh, are going to increase uh, enormously. And your equity with your queen jack suit is going to drop enormously when. Um, when the hand is going to be three-way post-flop instead of uh, being uh, heads up. So keep this in mind. You want to keep the fish in the pot. This is where the money is going to come from. By three betting fish, when they fold, you've lost money because the fish are going to make huge, huge mistakes post-flop. And you just, you just push the fish out. You're, you're just, you're just, uh, Turning a really profitable situation into a less profitable situation by three betting uh, the fish, and especially when they are short stacked. This is uh, because I mean, let's say you have ace king here, I would, and the fish raises up, I would definitely three bet with the intention of shoving any type of flop with ace king, but with king ten. I would be a king ten suited, which is uh, not a good hand to get it in uh, pre-flop. I would just merely wait for the flop and wait for the fish to make a huge mistake uh, post-flop. Then let's say what other people say about this. Uh, so CF Natural says that uh, he's constantly chasing fish, and I agree with him. Uh, you, Paul, you're playing for an hour. Not a lot of players are going to punish you because you are relentlessly uh, chasing fish, uh, fish or ice raising you. This is for now. Uh, you're, you're overthinking, you're outleveling yourself if you think that uh, people are going to treat at you const constantly when you are ice raising fish. Um, so, as a conclusion, I want to say that this hand example is really bad and really don't draw conclusions based on one hand. On the other hand, I want to say that you don't want to push fish out of the pot by three betting them with uh, uh, King Ten suited is not, not a premium hand. Um, so you want to keep fish in the pot because they're going to make huge mistake post flops. And uh, you want to keep chasing fish uh, relentlessly, no matter what, uh, people are not going to uh, you're not going to be exploitable, and definitely at 10 and L. Uh, I think this is uh, all I want to say about this hand. So keep in mind that you're playing for an L. Uh, you want to chase the fish. There are plenty of fish, and you don't want to outlevel yourself, and you want to be in the most profitable situation post-flop uh, with the fish and uh, not uh, and not uh, start three betting them uh, pre-flop with uh, marginal hands just because you know they play a lot of weak hands um, the fact is uh, you just don't have enough folding equity post-flop uh, to uh, profitably uh, three bet constantly three bet uh, fish
Okay, so this was it. I hope I uh, clarified a bit uh, about this topic, and I'll talk to you guys. I'll talk to you guys in the forums.